So, did Johnny tell you how I got Adam Cohen and Nancy go to the ballet together last night? <sighs> Little John's favorite shirt. And he's torn it right up the back. Babe, <laughs> aren't you interested in this? Well, it would be untruthful for me to say that I wasn't interested, dear. But on the other hand, I can't say that I approve. Well, I not only got them to go together, but I got Adam to feel sorry for Nancy. Um, why would you do a thing like that? So he'd want to rescue her. Oh, you know how a man feels when he thinks a woman has a problem. Oh, yes. <laughs> Frank and I were discussing it, and he said the reason that he got attracted to me in the first place was because he felt I was a damsel in distress. Ah, oh. hello, darling. Johnny said a fine job here. Hello, Delia. Hi. I need a couple of minutes to talk to Maeve. Alone. Oh. Sure. Dear, we can uh, finish our little talk later if you'd like. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, I think I'll go by the hospital and see if I can find out what happened last night with Dr. Cohen and you know who. Yes, that'll be fine. You do that. Have your little visit. I'll see Maeve later. Well, tell me. Now, what's going on with you? This is harder than I thought. I've come to say goodbye. Goodbye? I've taken a job in San Francisco and I'm leaving today. Oh. Oh, my dear. I, um, I just realized that things are not working, Seneca. And I've come to the point where I know that they never will. He can't change who he is. And I won't. And I just feel the distance is the best thing. <sighs> oh. Darling, that's, that's so far away. Oh, that's selfish of me, isn't it? To be thinking only of how much we'll all miss you. And I'll miss you all so much. But I feel that it's better, and I feel that this is a good time now to go. For whatever reason, I just can't stand around and watch Frank marry Ray. Will you see him before you go? I don't really know. I... I feel right now all I have to do is just start my own life again. Yeah, I understand. Even if it does break my heart, the thought of you being so far off. I'll come and visit you. I'll write to you. <laughs> Tell me, what, uh, what about little Edmund's memorial? It'll, it'll be fine. It'll be wonderful. Ray's taken over with her money, and oh. Seneca will make sure that the clinic is administered properly. Yes, but even so. Maeve, I know Frank will keep an eye on things. Oh, dear. I'm having such a, a foolish reaction to you leaving. I know. Because part of me just hates it. But I just feel like it's best. Well. Yes. Maeve, do me a favor. Yes, dear. You say goodbye to Frank for me, okay? Then you won't try to see him before you go? No, he, he's doing a lot of things and there's not that much time. I've got to go to my office, pack up my files, pack my suitcase and run to the airplane. Well, can you wait another minute here? I mean, there's something I want you to have. Of course I can. Jillian. Hello. Am I interrupting something? No, um, I just came to say goodbye to Maeve. Goodbye? Yes, I've, I've taken a job in San Francisco. I'm leaving this evening. Since I have this opportunity, there are one or two things I'd like to say to you.
was just thinking about you. Well, I, I wasn't just thinking about you. I was thinking about you a minute ago. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I just came over to say good morning. And I had a lovely evening last oh, night. I had such a good time. I couldn't sleep last <laughs> night. <laughs> the ballet, the whole ballet, everything. It just kept going over and over in my head. Oh, it was fun. I kept thinking about that little old lady who was sitting next to you peeking at us over the corner of her eye. <laughs> she was so worried when I came by myself and so relieved when a man turned up for me. Man was pleased about that himself. It was a lovely evening. You know, I don't know many men who like ballet. Well, we always had music in my house when we were growing up. My mom sang. My uh, mom and dad belonged to a choir, a chamber of music. And uh, I started with the Nutcracker when I was seven. I thought the best thing I'd ever seen in my life was that Christmas, Christmas tree. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, I think that's when I knew I had to dance the first time I saw the Nutcracker. You know, I'll bet we have a lot of things in common. Concerts for the young. Oh, every Thursday afternoon. How about music in the park? Every summer in Central Park when the Metropolitan used to give their free concerts. That's right. <laughs> we used to drive to Prospect Park for our concerts. Oh, those were beautiful evenings. I bet you went to dancing school. Foxtrot, <laughs> rumba, <laughs> and the tango, I think. With a complimentary kiss in the forehead when our behavior was exemplary. Well, we did those dances, but we didn't get any kiss on the forehead. Well, you had to be very, very good to get one of those. Would you like to go to a concert sometime? I'm not sure. There's a Brahms concerto for viola and uh, cello this Saturday night. Well, I'd love to, but I, I'm not sure I'm free. But you're not sure you're not free, right? No. Is there anything else I can tempt you with? <laughs> Please, you don't have to tempt me. How about me. if we substitute the ballet for the concerto? No, that isn't it. I'd love to go. Uh, but I'm afraid I can't. I'm sorry. Oh, well. Just have to ask you again sometime. <laughs> it was just a thought. And a very nice one. Thank you. Well, you are exemplary of companion for any musical <laughs> event. <laughs> Next week, the tango. Oh, played on the cello, of course. Of course. <laughs> Uh-oh. What is it? Sorry to hear you leaving. That is probably the least truthful thing you have ever said to me. On the contrary, I've been looking forward to your being at my wedding. Can't you wait? It's only a few days. I have reconciled myself to missing this great event. Pity. It would have been a pleasure to have you there. You may have persuaded Frank to marry you. I have. And I have no doubts that you will get him to march down the aisle. He'll walk down the aisle because he wants to. I have known him for a great many years. And if there is one thing that I'm absolutely certain about, is that being married to a political, powerful mistress is not what he wants. I think I've managed to be exactly what he wants for about 18 months now. Well, living together is one thing. Marriage is something else entirely. How profound. You're not going to be able to keep him. You're going to lose him. That is your opinion. No, actually, it is the opinion shared by a great many people who know Frank Ryan better than you do. His mother. All the people that love and understand him know that he is more than a political creature. And he is much, much more than a man in search of home, hearth, and slippers. I know him, Ray. And I know his family. I know the values that he lives by. And you're suggesting that I don't? I am suggesting that the other parts of his life, his religion, his family, his home, his sons, all the things that make up who he is, you could care less about. We are getting married in part to give little John a home, and once we've done that, we will provide him with a brother or a sister or both as soon as we possibly can. Oh, it must be hard work pretending like that. I love little John and can't wait to have a baby. Frank wants children. That is enough for me. Oh, for heaven's sakes. What do you think is going to happen anyway? You know you could care less about children and the domestic scene. How long do you think it's going to take Frank to figure that out? Then what? It will be a happy marriage, Jillian. No. He will be unhappy, and you will too. 
Why don't you just go and find somebody who can give you what you want? I what? knows you. I have done exactly that. No. And we both know that's not so. You know, I'm really glad I had this opportunity to try and make you understand that you are not fooling me or Maeve or anybody else. Fooling me about what? Oh, Ray, I didn't know that you were back in town. Well, we just came up for the day. <laughs> well, fooling me. Who's fooling me? Uh, it was nothing. Maeve, I have some uh, last-minute wedding details that I do want to go over with you. It... Maeve, I've got to run. Uh, excuse me, Ray, for a minute. Darling, I want you to have this. Oh, Maeve. Your mother's brooch, I can't take that. No, 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 no. It's got to be something that I care about. Or it won't mean anything. Please. It'll mean everything to me. I know. Oh, I don't want to leave. Oh. No one wants you to go, dear. You know, I have to. I know. I want you to find a wonderful life in San Francisco and somebody wonderful to share it with. Thank you. Thank you for this and thank you for a whole lifetime. Oh, Maeve. I've got to run. Uh, Ray. Yes? Did, uh, did Francis come here with you? I mean, to New York? Yes, he did. Well, do you have any idea of how I could uh, reach him? I'd like to speak with him. Well, I'm afraid he's in conference right now, Maeve. Well, uh, do you know when it'll be over? You know, I really don't. It could last all day. Well, is there any way for me to get a message to him? Well, I could try. I'd appreciate that, please. I really want to talk to him as soon as possible. Of course. Let me see what I can do. Yes. This is Ray Woodard speaking. Would it be possible for me to interrupt the senator? Want me to stick around or get lost? Get lost, please. Hello, Pat. May I ask what that was all about? Oh, dear. Let's step in here, shall we? This doesn't require privacy. You don't mind my asking, though. It's too hard to explain, but it was a joke. The kiss. Yes, Pat. And if I'm, I'm correctly informed, you went to the ballet with him last night? We were at the ballet together, yes. I did not go with him. Adam had two tickets to the ballet, which he gave to my mother and myself. My mother couldn't go, you were on duty, so I simply gave back the ticket I couldn't use to Adam. I did not invite him to come with me. On the other hand, I don't mind telling you that when he showed up, I was glad for the company. You sound angry. Well, I don't exactly like being questioned like this. And I can't say I much like getting off the elevator and having a feeling I'm interrupting something. I told you you weren't. Have there been any other occasions where Adam just happened to be <sighs> the same place you were? This isn't fair. Oh, I think that's a reasonable question. If you don't trust me... Look, this hospital is full of men who would take me out if I gave them any encouragement at all, and I don't. Did you encourage Adam? No! Pat, how, how can you think that? I'm sorry. It's just that for the past couple of days, every time we turn around, there's Adam. Yes. Especially Friday night at dinner with your mother. My mother invited the doctors who've been on Daddy's case, including you. Yes, and Roger Coleridge and I were out of place, and Adam was completely at home. We share those things. You, you understand that? I'm trying to. 
I also understand that he likes you. I like him, for heaven's sakes. But I don't love him. You're still the person that I love. Thank you. I only wish it hadn't been necessary for you to say still like love me. As if it's a condition that's approaching an end. I didn't mean it that way. You know what's bothering me, don't you? A silly kiss. It hasn't anything to do with it. I love you. So much. I believe in you, and I believe in us. Yes. But I'm not at all sure we can preserve that, Nan. You won't consider marriage... And you... neither should you. Then how do we go on? Carefully. And lovingly. What makes things... I don't know. We, without a real future, that... We have never had that option. What makes things so painful is it knowing that I'm wrong for you in, in so many ways and, and Adam is right in about every way. Except he's not the person that I'm in love with. I'm in love with you. Why can't you understand that? Why isn't that enough? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm having a lot of trouble with it. <sighs> I wish you weren't. <laughs> I really do. Anything I can do to persuade you not to go? Please stop. I don't want you to leave. We can't be other people. I can't be somebody else and neither can you. I'm willing to try. Pretending doesn't work. We have demonstrated that. Jillian. I love you. I don't want to lose you. Seneca, you have so much to give the right person. After I'm gone, I no, know no, that no, you... No, 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 no. There isn't anyone else for me. Of course there is. The world is full of nice people who get joy out of being told what to do. I just don't happen to be one of them. We should try again. Leaving is a mistake. That's your opinion. Leaving for me is, is the start of a new life. Jillian, I, I realize I, I can't change the person that I am, but if, if we could start again, I, I certainly would make every effort. You have made every effort, and so have I. You're still the person I want. In spite of everything, I believe I can make you happy. We could have a life together with a family and a home. It's a generous offer. After everything that I've done. But it's not right. I'm not right for you. I say you are. <sighs> you know, it would be so much easier if I said you're right. And I said, yes, I can be the person that you want me to be. At least I wouldn't have to see you hurting like this. Jillian, nobody has to hurt. Please stay. Come away with me on a second honeymoon. Let's begin our life all over again. Please don't ask me again. There are lots of things that I, I have to get ready before I leave for the airport. Hello. I have been waiting for you. Mm. I want all the details. How'd it go? Well, they still seem to like me. Energy crisis or no energy crisis. Mm. Intelligent people. Mm. So do I. Mm. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me call the office, check in for any messages. Well, I've already called Georgia. I was afraid he might go over there first. You were afraid? 
Yeah, I was afraid that you might uh, get involved in work instead of being involved. <laughs> well, was there anything urgent? Not when I can't wait. <laughs> uh, Ray. Yeah? <laughs> What's mm -hmm. going on, hmm? Come on. Well, I have this passion for you, you see. <laughs> Will you look what I she's doing here? And I am not going to let you out. Come on, my son. <laughs> Well, I can't say I don't like it. <laughs> hey, hmm. do we have anything else we have to do this afternoon? Hmm, no, I was just going to stop by Ryan's, check in there. Well, can we do that later? Like, uh, after dinner? Well, yeah, I suppose so. Good. <laughs> because we have this whole long afternoon with nobody to bother us. And I got this wonderful idea about how to spend it. I have a Yeah? And you won't be bored. I promise. This Sunday, Breakfast in Bed's taking a vacation, so One Tree Hill's taking over. Five hours of cute couples with major love troubles. Make Sunday your fun day. One Tree Hill Back to School Marathon, this Sunday from 8 to 1 on SoapNet.